What's up everyone? What's up? Uh, okay. So, this is another kind of like behind the edit. Now this took me 5 hours and it's kind of like in the middle. Like my moods when it comes to editing is like, um, it's like in three stages. First stage is like, eh, I'll just rush it, just do it. Kind of like what I was doing with this one. <laughs> this is kind of like in the middle between me being serious and me like going, just being lazy. So I wanted to take y'all guys through the whole experience. This took me five hours and this is the original image and yeah this is from a friend an amazing photographer he's on instagram you can check him out at um lumi studio his name is Bellumi. and yeah he was kind enough to send me this raw file to work on so yeah so obviously bring it in bringing it into jesus christ bringing it into photoshop the first thing i did was duplicate the layers and i did two blemish layers so i'm going to show you what i did in both of them so this is the overall blemish removal this stuff isn't actually freckles it's like supposed to be artificial freckles but <laughs> it didn't come out as planned so the first thing i did was i removed the marks on her neck like fold marks and then the um stretch marks and i kind of did some minor adjustments to her for did i wait what i can't remember what i did exactly five hours <laughs> okay then this one i used it to remove the um stuff on her face and if you zoom in yeah she's having a little bit of over there so i got rid of that as well simple stuff just use the clone stamp to change the blend mode to lighting and then sample from areas that have that are bright like her normal skin brightness and then just dabbed over the hair layers the hair is darker than the skin so me doing that ensures that the skin remains as it is but the dark hair is removed so zoom back out after blemish removal i did some micro dajabon and like i said i'm not super into this stuff i usually use it for the eyes to remove like eye bags and stuff it's kind of like i'm still like starting now and i don't ever think i don't actually think i'll get really into this because it's so stressful and it's not just there so I, ju I just do it just because i guess little by little i'll start getting the hand of it but micro dodge and burn nothing much to see there as you can see i could have obviously gone for that but chose not to then this is a dummy layer because i'm using the nbp plugin for frequency separation basically it just automates the whole stuff you select what you want the parameters and stuff and it just brings everything together but you need to have a layer and this is the dummy i could actually delete this but i'm not going to so frequency separation boom <laughs> massive difference and if you come in here i use pix imperfect method which is which is basically just using a brush tool rather than the um mix out brush um so i use the brush tool so it's literally like i'm painting over her skin and i literally paint on her skin like I paint the shadows like if I see a part is too dark I literally come into the color increase the brightness and go back there so I'm not joking when I see I'm literally painting her skin <laughs> so you can see all the paint layers that I went through man so crazy started with this did the forehead and bit of the nose then the other side then I just kept on when i see that i've done something that is really good and i don't want to mess it up i just create a new layer work on that i just keep doing it and as you can see it's going on well but one thing i did do is i worked on this new layer where i took the lasso tool selected some areas and blurred it like these highlighted areas 
I usually tend to blur highlights because I like the look you get when you blur the highlights. It, it's not sharp and it's just smooth. It's kind of like what I like. So I did that as well. I didn't touch the high layer at all. Then after that, I created a mask because when I do this stuff, man, I'm just crazy. <laughs> so I, it gets to the hair, it gets on her eyebrow, it gets in her eye and the... Um, mask is just to make sure the eyes the eyebrows the hair and the lips are not affected then after that as you can see her skin her face is a different color from her body which is a very big thing that you see a lot of people just don't do just don't deal with is that when the makeup artist works on the image the makeup artist usually is just working on the person's or the model's face right and this place is untouched and what happens is you have a different color and it's just weird like i see this a lot on instagram and i'm like why why do people not just fix that so i literally copied um you guys seriously get this nbp plugin it's like amazing like you pay for it yeah obviously but jesus christ it's so amazing so for this image i had already like blended the skin tones and I didn't want to have to do that again here and I liked the skin tones on this image so what I did was I copied the skin tones with this so I analyzed it to copy the skin tone I came here and I just literally dropped it in <laughs> as you can see it turned it it took it to okay so this is the total the full effect let me start from where I stopped so the first thing it did is it dropped it yeah it reduces the opacity and it puts it on soft light and so what happens is as you can see the before and after i masked out just her face and i doubled that to kind of like get it to look more like this and then just go around with a brush and try to like paint in some places you feel would, would feel would be darker and stuff and then i did it again very mild this time then what I did was I um, inverted the mask and then just applied it to the background to kind of like give it this wholesome look. So the total before and after it looks well blended, at least to a point that I'm happy with. Then global dodge and burn. I just literally used the curves and then used the blend if layer. As you can see with the burn, I took it away from the highlights and I dropped the curve all the way and then i what i did was i played usually for the way i do my dodge and burn i play with uh, the way i dodge and burn is with the mask layer so i put the brush settings on opacity of 50 flow on 100 and then just worked to darken areas that i want but the good thing with the way i do it is you will never affect the highlights like you don't have an issue of you mistakenly touching the highlights or anything like that because you've removed the highlights from this area from the blend if options and you do that the same thing with the dodge and then i just adjusted the opacity to where i like it then the eye retouch is very oh shoot it's very minimal like you probably have to zoom in to see it and i was actually thinking of adding like some colors but that was just too stressful and i like it this way then after this i went to the lips now the lip look the lips look kind of good but like you can see lipstick is popping up and stuff and i didn't like that so what i did was i used the pen tool to select out the lips yeah created a new layer then with the selected area created a mask which is this one over here then blurred that mask so that the transition is smooth and literally use the clone stamp tool to like just work on the edges so you can see it's very minimal but you can actually notice a change especially at the sides and the tops so that was that then i don't think this layer was just for anything then skin tones skin tones this i used um um prince mason's skin tone lot you guys can buy that from his site 
pretty cool i liked the look but what happened where it, it made it darker and i didn't like that so i created another curves layer um used the selective stuff to brighten the shadows drop the highlights a bit and then changed it to luminosity you can see the effect the um tones just affected the brightness then i added my special lock what i use on all the images on my instagram page i made this lock while i made this when did i make this when did i make this one i've been using this okay so the original version of this lot that i made the original version i made that early last year <laughs> and i've been using it and i've been changing it gradually as i go on and i kind of got it to a point that i liked now this now the way this the, my preset works the way i use it is for some images it works perfectly once i apply it i don't really need to adjust it but what happens is okay let me let me see if i can create a new layer above everything okay so filter camera or filters just for you guys to kind of see what happens when i use it can you see it kind of turns the skin gold i'm not joking like yellowish gold and i don't know why i liked this at a point but i did <laughs> so what i usually do is once i've put this over the like once i've applied the preset i go to camera calibration i dropped i dropped this dropped really i dropped this to a certain point that i like adjust the saturation then i raise this as well just to kind of like remove some of the pinky feel you probably get when you go to but because this has been edited well so and then what i did for this particular image was the oranges i dropped the saturation to like six or something and then the hue i dropped it to like minus two and i just went back and forth so i didn't just use the um let me delete this uh, let me just leave it okay so where is it so i didn't just apply the lot like the preset like that i just i applied it but then adjusted it to match the vibe that i was going for and then i reduced the opacity which is i've been working with lightroom for so many years and now i almost can't work in lightroom anymore i literally use lightroom just to crop the image and to adjust the brightness when i just import the raw file everything i do now is in photoshop because of this opacity slider my god i like you can apply 50 different presets and in photoshop make each preset work for different i could apply a preset just for the background i could apply a preset for our eyes i could apply a filter for our face oh my god it's freaking interesting man so I adjusted that and reduced the opacity then i softened the image so i went back to camera raw filters i dropped the clarity i gave it a faded look i increased the contrast just a little bit and then i um increased the um what's it called what's it called what is it called um i'm just opening it up <laughs> Where's the details? Okay, noise reduction. Jeez. I reduced the noise reduction as well. So that is how I made it soft. Soft. Oh, I love I love that. Then I added a split tone. Just to make the background. Just make her pop a little bit more from the background. And I'll probably add a color balance layer. I would probably add a color balance layer, but split tone is just easier. Then something i've started doing which i literally do for all my images now is what i call this dreamy effect and i saw it on someone's account channel so, um so on youtube so I'm, it's not like i started this it's definitely not me that started it but what i started doing was i started masking it out to certain areas and as you can see like is 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 the littlest thing i'm you just don't really notice it here but you feel it in some images that I have on my account. Like you just feel this soft, smooth, beautiful, beautiful skin. It's just amazing. And that's literally that. Um, 
yeah that's actually everything <laughs> i'm not going to be adding i was thinking of adding some kind of like composites here and they're like butterflies and stars and stuff but i'll just make it too complex and i'm tired <laughs> It's been five hours and I really just want to upload. Like I'm literally just not. I'm not. This is not a paid shoot or something like that. It's literally a friend that just gave me, asked him if I could work on this, and he said yes. So that's everything. And yeah, that's the entire process. Now what I'll do, which I advise you all guys to do, every time you work, is to group all of this. So it's on Pix Imperfect. You can see this. This is 1.4 gig. This image. <laughs> 1.4 gig and that's too much so what you do is group all the major layers together filter convert for smart filters and what that does is it, it just puts everything in one smart layer and for some strange reason photoshop thinks everything has been compressed into one layer so it drops the i mean just watch pix imperfect's video man like i can't explain that but it literally has saved my hard disk from crashing <laughs> because even not for this i'd be having several images that are like two gig one gig it's just funny because i saved this in tif so i can send it back to lightroom then do some minor tweaking there and then export but i'm happy with this it's not too crazy and i'm actually still works work on this some more but like this is the majority of the work that i've done and i just wanted to take you guys through the whole process so yeah thanks for watching and i hope you gained stuff from this if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section down below and be sure to leave a like and yeah thanks for watching subscribe hit the bell and stay tuned for more yeah bye bye <laughs>